What up? Welcome back once again to the Necro Zoo. I am Bones. And in this one, let's go ahead and add one more figure to my McFarlane DC Multiverse collection. Now today we will continue the Flashpoint wave. Now in this wave we will be building the Cyborg Collect build figure. Now already released have been Flashpoint Aquaman, Project Superman, and now we have Flashpoint Flash. Now the final figure is kind of a mystery for right now, but basically it's probably going to be Armored Up Wonder Woman. But you never know, there could be a surprise and we could get <laughs> an entirely different figure and then get that Wonder Woman later on. Previously, they had already released the Thomas Wayne Batman version from Flashpoint, which is an awesome figure. But today we will be taking a look at the Flash figure. Now, pretty cool figure, pretty interesting. What we will receive with this figure, everybody's hyped up to get this one in their collection. But let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now, he does look pretty fast in the packaging. But now we will go ahead and take a closer look at it. But first, he does come with your standard black DC Multiverse stand. Now, of course, this is not really needed, but sometimes they do come in useful. He also comes with his data file card. On the front, you do have an image from the Flashpoint comics. Some source material there, pretty sweet. And on the back, you do have some information. Pretty cool, we'll add that to the collection. Now, if you've never read Flashpoint, it's pretty awesome. But another thing you can do is actually watch the DC animated Flashpoint movie. It is one of my favorite animated films, top five at least. And if you check it out, you will for sure not be disappointed. It is an awesome, awesome, gritty version of the Flashpoint storyline. Now he does come with some accessories. First off, you do have the unmasked Barry Allen head. Pretty sweet. Now. Everybody's happy about this. Everybody has been begging McFarlane to add extra head sculpts with the figures. Uh, <laughs> of course, you guys know me. I like I'm the minority in a lot of things about the DC multiverse. And one of them is that I do not like having extra heads. Now, there is a method behind the madness, and that is because when you get... Uh, alternate head sculpt with like a gold label release you have two bodies to display the figures now me I've always had the collector habit that when a figure comes with two heads I actually have to buy two figures to display both versions of the character now I've actually been doing this ever since DC Universe Classics right on into the Mattel multiverse I've always done this of course, that's my problem. You know, it's if everybody wants extra heads, that's what the majority wants. But you know, recently I have been always buying three of these figures of the Target exclusive collectible waves. So this will not be any different. And now at least I will have, besides doing custom work, I will have something to utilize the extra parts with. Because I will be displaying one regular flash and then one version with the unmasked head. It's a win-win for McFarlane. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still going to end up triple dipping. But everybody else will have the option to switch heads. So it's not a big deal. I will persevere. Now you also get this kind of rolled down cowl mask part that when he's unmasked actually rolls back to the back of his neck. Pretty cool. Has some cool sculpting detail. You got the wing tips there. So it actually looks like the mask is actually folded back. Pretty cool. We'll take a look at that later on. Now you also get the legs for Cyborg from the Flashpoint. Now I have been hearing a lot of ruckus, you know, online that these are huge. 
which makes Cyborg a giant figure. Well, besides the fact that he's a collect-to-build figure, there is another reason for this. As I stated before, if you never read Flashpoint or if you've never checked out the animated movie, Cyborg is a giant in this version. He has been connected with technology from the government. So he's basically like a huge walking tank and he's like double the size of the other characters. It's not new to me. I always knew this was probably a possibility that the cyborg is going to be big because he is big in the reference material. So we'll hold on to these. Now let's go ahead and take a closer look at the flash. Off the bat, we do know that this is just a reuse of the body mold from Blue Beetle and Booster Gold. They've also used it for Dead Man and the upcoming Captain Adam, which this is basically like using the same body book for a lot of regular costume heroes, which is nothing new for action figures. I mean, that's basically what DC Universe Classics was, was just the same body over and over, just different paint apps and a little bit of different details. The only downside for me for that is that like in DC Universe Classics, they use the same body mold as Batman and the Flash is supposed to be more of a slender figure whereas the Batman buck was a muscular male figure. So basically you're looking at a muscular Flash instead of a more speedster like lean physique Flash. But it was no big deal. Nobody complained back then. So I surely will not be complaining now. But all in all, it's an awesome looking figure. Just your basic paint job. The red is a little bit glossy for my taste, but that's fine. These are, after all, action figures. But they got all the details right. I do love the red. It's a deep, almost dark red. And for first impressions, <laughs> this is your basic comic book styled Flash figure. So that is awesome for everybody that wanted one. And of course me, all this does is give me more options. I now have the original Rebirth Flash to put with some figures. And then I have this new comic version to put with other figures. So it'll all work itself out in the end. It's all good. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the head scope. Now, I really love this head scope. I was noticing that in some turns when you move them around, it actually looks like kind of live action, which is kind of weird to say because this is a comic book based figure but the work that they did on it like the shadowing and all that and the added little paint details just gives it like this weird sort of almost if it's a guy in a costume but like in live action so I, always, I thought that was kind of uh, cool to see that but some awesome detail you do have his wing tips there on the side nice little mixture of tones on the exposed part of the cowl that way you know the lips are a certain color you got a little bit of shading around there the eyes are awesome you even have a little bit of like frow detail like right on the forehead it's kind of hard to see but it is there which is awesome so all in all it's a beautiful head sculpt let's take a look at the articulation he does look down really well man looks cool can look up as well pretty easily you got right to left and of course you could tilt his head for some kooky character given off from Barry Allen pretty awesome let's take a look at the waist articulation you do have side to side you got the full tilt to whirl at the waist nice and smooth you got a lower waist swivel upper chest swivel you can twist them, get them in some pretty cool running poses or action poses. Now, I know a lot of times people don't like these two little abs that are above on the upper torso. But all that does is when you do lean them back or when you twist them, it just gives that added little matching scope work to the design so it doesn't break up or have a big gap. So mm, I could take it or leave it. It is functional to the figure. Let's take a look at the crunch. Oh, he has a oh, he has a pretty generous crunch not too much you could mod this but the upper chest does almost touch the belt and of course that is sort of a test of how much crunch he has 
but of course he could lean back. No problem, as basically all McFarland figures could do. Get him in a T pose pretty smoothly. Um, does raise up a little bit more, almost a Y pose. Take a look at the shoulders. You do have that sort of socket and bushing joint, which gives you a lot of range, but basically it is there to cover the gap between the two parts, but you still get a lot of movement. You have up and down, front to back, bicep swivel, deep double jointed elbows that look passable. Straighten them back out. Now going from the shoulders, really nice little smooth paint. Not really any different tones, but you don't really need it because the light actually gives a little bit of the like muscle tone going through the suit. Going down now, they did not sculpt out the lightning bolts around the wrist, which is a shame, not a, not a big deal. And then going down into the hand through this sculpted out wrist joint. Now there is a position where you're supposed to put it to get the full like silhouette of the forearm into the hand. If you have it the other way, it looks kind of skinny. But if you have it the way it's supposed to be, it actually looks really good. And then you still have the four ways of wrist articulation from McFarlane. Pretty awesome. Now let's go to the other side. You have the same thing, but it goes down into a fist. Now on the left side, you actually have a sort of grasping, gripping hand or trigger hand. And a lot of people <laughs> like are pretty mad about this, but I mean, it's the same hands that the Blue Beetle has. I mean, that's basically why they did that because it's the same body, but it is no big deal. I have actually gotten different hands from different figures. I got a nice little assortment of hands here. So I did get some running hands. These are actually from the Wallace West figure, which I actually have a double of. And then I got an extra fist and like a sort of gesturing hand from another custom I did, which these come from Impulse. But all I had to do was like grind them out a little bit on the inside and they actually do to pop this off. They actually do fit right in there. So no, <laughs> you know what I say, no running hand, no problem. Now Flash does have a cool running hand, but actually a cool assortment of different hands because I could either have them posing running hands or I could add the other fist and have them in a double fist pose, like if he's running or whatever. So a lot of cool options. You just gotta look into all your extra fodder that you have, pretty cool and put back that grasping hand okay now another thing i'd like to bring up is that when you go down look at the chest emblem <laughs> it is just painted on it is not sculpted on now they did sculpt out the lightning bolt around the waist which is you know appreciated but that's part of this you know this kind of harkens back to dc universe classics where they just used the same body and added small details. But a lot of the details were actually just painted on. So, uh, I mean, it's a double-edged sword because I do not mind this. I'll, you know, like I said before, I'll take classic figures and I'll take new versions of figures that we've never seen before. But just the problem is I actually like McFarlane's DC Multiverse for the new sculpts and the textures and the different versions of figures and for me this is kind of just reverting back to doing what all a lot of companies do which is just painting on details and actually no scope work at all but luckily we are getting both sides of the coin we're getting new original sculpts and we're getting some reuse as well so like i said no big deal this is a big line this is <laughs> there's a lot of figures still to come and a lot of years still to go so we'll see what else is released by McFarlane. You can also move his hands above his head pretty simply for some cool posing. Let's go down to the thighs now. He actually has a pretty generous thigh swivel which most figures have been having recently and all that allows you to do is you can move the boot 
from side to side without having a thigh cut and breaking up this beautiful leg sculpt. It could kick up really high. It could kick back as well. Now, the trunks are made of rubber so that you can actually get all of this range. If you look at the back, the trunks actually move out of the way and bunch up. But when you put them back to their original position, the trunks actually go back to their original form. So don't be afraid to get all the dexterity and range that you can. The trunks are actually made specifically for that purpose. You can cock out his knee. He has that sweet McFarland hip swivel. Double jointed knees. Straighten them out. Up and down at the ankle. Right to left. Rocker. Pretty smooth. And toe articulation. Now before we go, let's take a complete look at the lower body. Not much to see, but I am pretty happy to see these yellow boots with the wingtips on them. Pretty classic looking and a pretty signature look for Barry Allen's Flash. Pretty awesome. I mean, it's smooth scope work. There's not really a lot of detail. It's just, you know, at least you could see the muscle tones and the boots have a little bit of swirling on them. Kind of a marbling for the plastic, but you can always touch this up with a little bit of different you know tones of yellow paint so that would be pretty nice to do checking him out from the bottom no tread but he does have some identifying marks moving up the back nice wrinkles that are sculpted into the boots going up smooth texture nice muscle tone going into the back love that back sculpt awesome you do have the kind of cut out portions of the shoulder where you could get him to move his arms back a lot more adding a little bit of extra range in the shoulders awesome so all in all pretty awesome classic looking flash figure uh, i'm not so sure he's gonna replace my rebirth figure but uh it's gonna be close i guess he doesn't have to replace them they each have their own figures that they are gonna look good standing around with and hey they can even do some photo shoots together having different versions of flash so awesome awesome i do like this figure pretty cool you can pop the head off put that ring with the cowl there and then pop this unmasked head on wow that is a pretty nice barry allen head sculpt classic looking now i have heard people say that you could put this on the Aquaman figure and make like a classic Aquaman. Now I did try this, but this head is just too small because this body is a smaller body. And now it is minimal, you could kind of fudge it, but I really, really like my NECA custom <laughs> uh, Aquaman, so that's not gonna change. That is my Aquaman for now until McFarlane makes a classic version. If he never does, then that uh, Flash NECA head will always be my Aquaman for now. And also, as I said before, I'm going to buy another one of these so that I could display both versions of Barry Allen's Flash, masked and unmasked. Now, I heard people complaining about the grabbing hand, but what I found, <laughs> what I figured out to do was actually I added in the egg sandwich which I always like to use whenever the opportunity presents itself. And yeah, this is, <laughs> this is awesome. Having an unmasked berry taking a break and carving up there a little bit with some egg sandwich. So getting his protein in, pretty sweet. I actually like this. I may, when I finally make my unmasked version, I may actually paint the neck flesh color because I've actually seen both versions, like where you could see the neck and where, where it actually stays red when he gets unmasked. I don't know. I, I may paint the neck flesh color that way just to give it like to differentiate it from the regular masked flash a little bit more. But I just like this image of him eating the sandwich. It's pretty cool. So you can, you know, pop off that unmasked head. 
put back the masthead, pop off this grasping hand, and pop in this other alternate fist that I got from Impulse. So now he could, you know, have double fisted action. Pretty awesome. Just little details that you could add on your own to make the figure a little bit better is always awesome. Now, another thing was, you know, oh, we didn't get no speed force effects. Man, I have so many speed force effects. There, I have like a whole box full of them. And, you know, you add these onto him. You have tons to choose from. Well, at least I do. And that's not a big deal as well. That's why I always say you can mix and match your accessories that McFarlane gives you or even from other companies. Now, before we go, let's do some comparisons. Let's put our flash out here. Now, I do, of course, have a DC Universe Classics Barry Allen flash. Uh, they do look similar. All his details are actually painted on. Probably the closest thing that match them together is the boots. They're the same style. But this one has all his lightning bolts just painted on. But his chest symbol is also painted on. But it actually has like a black outline. Which actually make it pop a little bit more. And I really wish they would have added that black outline to this McFarlane Flash. It just would have gave it that little chef's kiss to make it look a lot better i mean that's my opinion i actually have two of these because i have another display that is like super friends so this is just for my regular display and then this is for my super friends display i even brought out just for fun a custom that i did of a flash pretty cool I never shown that one also just thought i would show it right now um now let's bring out the Rebirth Flash. A lot of people were saying that he was too tall. And if you put these two next to each other, they're actually almost exactly the same height. So I don't know why, but if you put them next to each other, they're almost exactly level at the same height. He may be a smidgen taller, but it's, you know, not by much. So I never got that whole thing that, that this a uh, rebirth flash was too tall just i don't get it but he's still i just love like the way he has that leaner physique and the way that like his aesthetics look just look better to me and the texture and the costume the head scope with that smirk he actually has the embossed raised emblem on the chest man i mean the only thing he's missing are like the wingtips that's one thing he is missing and then these are like stylized to the Rebirth version so they don't look like a classic Flash. But I mean, you could get the best of both worlds and actually add some details to this one. But this one's actually pretty expensive on the aftermarket right now. I think you're looking at about, you know, 50 bucks or more. So I don't know if you'd really want to waste one of these to do some custom work. But <laughs> I don't have to pick either one of these. I enjoy both of them, and both of them will actually have their own uh, little group that I could actually set them with or take photos with. So, no biggie. I enjoy having both classic version and modern version in my collection. Now, this is the same body mold as this figure. This is the Blue Beetle. Um, he's actually it. He actually is slightly taller than this Flash. I don't know how they did how they did it, but he is like a smidgen taller than this Flash, which is rather interesting. As they are being the same, you know, body mold. So yeah, it's cool, no big deal. We can actually go ahead and bring out my original custom baby blue Superman. Probably look good with these figures. And then let's go ahead and bring out my NECA headed Aquaman, which this is my definitive Aquaman for now until McFarlane makes, you know, an uh, unbearded, short haired version of Arthur Curry. If not, this is my go to look for Aquaman, so that's not going to change. Love the trident, the way it looks with him. And just for fun, let's bring out some Hal Jordan 
my Green Lantern just to finish off this little group of superheroes. So, all in all, happy with them. Happy to add them to the collection. Let's look forward to more classic releases, classic villains, females, classic females, and even some stuff we've never dreamed of having. But you guys, keep hunting out there. Keep collecting. Keep customizing. And I will see you on the next one. Crazy Joe, but now they can call me Batman.